All right. Hey, to any of my friends out there in YouTube land, this is me trying out my uh, StreamYard. First time ever trying this. I'm not sure this is the format to use. Um, on Sunday, I tried this, and um, I did it just straight through YouTube. So um, I'm not quite ready for OBS, but I've heard this might be another opportunity to do this. So this is through my iPad. Don't see anybody yet. Um, not sure if anybody's there. I'm not sure. I'm gonna view on YouTube. Oh well, boy, this is interesting. Well, I'm still here. Hey, Mike. Anyhow, I don't know what I'm saying right now. I'm just testing. I'm looking to do a live Ask Girl Anything this weekend. So I'm trying to see if this is a possibility. So, but nice seeing Mike again today. Um, anybody else out there? I see five. Anybody's got a question? Anybody want to say hi? taking questions right now. I'm live for two minutes and 11 seconds. By the way, I lost my live broadcast from Sunday, which is really where this all started today. I was just um, goofing around. I said, hey, let me try this. It's the end of my work day. I thought I would just give this a try. So um, not a lot to talk about today. You know, um, Carlisle, how are you? Just link me in to join and see if the two people can do this. How do I do that, Mike? That's an interesting concept. How do I link you in? Invite. All right, copy to clipboard. I can invite up to six guests. All right, I'm gonna try this, Mike. I copied it to clipboard. Let's see. Do I link you in by inviting you through? Let me see. Hi, Philip from the UK. Thanks for jo joining us. I'm trying to figure out how to link somebody in. And if I can get this person in, this would be very cool for everybody and this broadcast. So um, I'm going to send it to you through my um, messaging, Mike, because we, we were messaging a few minutes ago. I assume this is all... worked i texted it to you i don't know how that works if you jump on it that way or not but let's say i invited you um let's go two person let's say invite a guest and see how this layout is closed tip that doesn't help how about this one boy mike thanks for being around i hope i can get you on that'd be really cool if i could figure out how to do this of course, I have no idea. Um, and all you guys watch me, thank you for watching me fumbling with the, with something like this. But this is this is kind of what it's about, isn't it? Trying to figure things out. So, camera, audio, guess. All right, let's see guess. Guess, see viewer comments. Guess must authenticate. No, I don't. I didn't do that to you, Mike. Can you get in, Mike? sent you a link if i can get mike fazano on you guys will have some fun but this is the interesting thing of doing this in real time and not planning it out at all just so you all know that so um 
Jeff Holden, I see you out there. How are you, Jeff? Um, we are playing with StreamYard today, and we're playing with trying to do a live Ask Girl Anything someday. And Jeff Holden is the expert on doing this stuff. He uses OBS. I should go take lessons from Jeff is what I should do and get my OBS up, but I haven't figured that out either. But um, just for fun, we're doing this today. We're trying this. Okay. I guess, Mike, you cannot get in with that link for some reason. Um, instructions for grass. You can have an upgrade if you need more. I don't need more. just want to see one. Oh, we might have Mike Fasano on. Mike Fasano. Let's see if I can get you on the screen now. That's the next problem, isn't it? Are you there, Mike? I, I see your face, Mike. You're there. So now how do I get you into the game? Add to stream. Okay. There you are. <laughs> you have to click. You have to click on me. I couldn't figure it out. Thank you, Mike Fasano, for coming on. Hey, guys, this is the famous Mike Fasano, just so you know. We're, we're well, not talking to this anybody. Mike I'm, Earl, I'm Earl famous. Tiger Army? No, man, you are the drum tech. Oh, stop. Dude, dude this, this guy has, has helped on so many albums. Um, roomed with Matt Sorum, for those of you guys who know Matt. He was roomy with Matt Sorum for years and um, worked on a lot of those. Was it the Guns N' Roses albums he played, he played on? Um, the Spaghetti Incident album was my first record. And then uh, whatever else he did after that, which is like the Cult and Velvet Revolver and stuff like that. Very cool. That, that, that's, that's very cool. And tell us some of some of the other albums you've worked on. I know you worked on Green, some Green Day projects. They've used your drums. You yeah, um, Green Day. Yes, it, it it was really a lot of Trey's drums, but I worked on a few Green Day records, and um, it was like Guns N' Roses and Green Day, and then everything in between sort of started happening because my friend Jerry was a producer who mixed the Dookie record, and uh, I worked on a lot of like um, Blink One Eighty Two and Newfound Glory and stuff like that um, so a few things yeah what do you think you, your, what do you think your new format well, I can't I believe it, it. You, you I, I told you something I I me little old me told you about streamyard you and here did, you uh, are you're the second person though somebody else told me about it too two um, hours later you're on stream streamyard well, you know, I had to give it a try. And then I felt, you know, what really bummed me out is my, my recorded Ask Girl Anything live. Mm -hmm. I somehow deleted it. I can't find it. So that's what got me into this today. I started goofing around with it. But uh, show us your drum room. Well, Mike, I'm just, Mike, I'm trying to get a place to put this thing up because I don't have, um, I don't have a, a folder for this. It's such a last minute thing, me and you just doing this on the fly. But that's what your show's about on the fly, right? It on the fly. So you got the new the new Gretsch kit up? I put as many things up as I could. But everything I need to hit is in the right place for the other gig, the Tiger Army gig. Yeah. But this is all just this is just to fool around with. But Mike is in the Gretsch camp, the Gretsch family. He's because of you. Well, you were such you. a big, big uh I mean everybody says it's because of Vinny, but it's because of you, Earl. You're a Gretsch <laughs> player. Well, we definitely had a lot of conversations about it. I remember a lot of nights on the road, been talking to you about Gretsch drums, and you were a longtime pork pie player. Yes, you know? great drums, great drums. Great drum. uh, just you a different. Tons... What's yeah. that? You, it's just a different kit, right? Different vibe. Yeah, it's just a different. I think it's a really great thing, especially first of all, Gretsch drums are great for just anything, but um, anything they can do anything. But especially for Tiger Army, it you know our guy Nick is a Gretsch guitar endorser, and he um, I don't know it's just a thing. It's a rockabilly. It's a it's a, it's a you know that our band our I guess our roots would be that rockabilly psychabilly, basically old rock and roll with a maybe a punk edge once in a while. Um, so yeah, these drums just they can do it all. But these drums really fit the it's the right outfit for the wedding. You know what I mean? You wear a tuxedo at a wedding. It's a proper proper outfit. I've done a lot of those gigs, trust me. I know so, about. yeah, it's cool. Yeah. So, uh, how is this? This is great, right? Look at you. You're live. 
<laughs> it's crazy. Just I was just goofing around. It didn't give me. It, it said it would cost me if I wanted to record it, so I didn't record it. I, hopefully, YouTube's recording it. That's what I hope's going on. Here, I so. think YouTube probably is because I think my friend didn't have it for the longest time. He he didn't have a pro account. But it would just go up if you wanted to put it up right afterwards. Yeah, that's what I'll end up doing. But I got my friend Keith Scott just said I love Tiger Army, so I don't know if well, you can see. Oh, thank you. The, I, uh, you know, on this, I I can't see what you see. Okay. If I uh, had, if you put me in, which you should never do to your guests, as like a uh, administrator, put right. my email in there, then I would see exactly what you do, and then I can change the camera angles. I could take you out and keep me in, or. We could add right. somebody else, but I can't, I don't have those controls. When I was working on that show in the morning, working, when I was, when I had nothing to do when COVID hit and my friend had a show at eight o'clock in the morning and I was one of the, the henchmen on the show, um, I had that camera switching uh, ability and sending yeah. people links and stuff like that. Like you could send somebody else that you know a link and then there'd be three people on here and then four up to however many for, that's on the free site. But no, I'm glad you're doing this. This is great. Because you know what's funny, Earl, is you have such a great demeanor, even not one-on-one -on -one like this. Even when you're by yourself doing the, the Ask Earl Anna things, you're so personable to the camera. I w that's what was really engaging to me. First of all, what you were saying and how you were saying it was really great. And so this is just going to be a great thing for you. Whenever you want to pop on and do something with somebody, you can. And then and do it. You know, it doesn't have to be a set thing. It could be whenever. Hey, I got, again, I looked at my phone. I got a not notification. It said you were going live. And then I saw you started talk, saying StreamYard. I got all excited. You listened yeah. to me and somebody else's advice on this. And I thought that was great. Yeah. I, I, I definitely want to be able to do more of this kind of interview kind of thing and hang out with people and chat drums. And you're a great guy to chat drums. I mean, we could probably chat hours on drums. The amount of drums you have, um, you have every just about every drum any studio drummer would want, you know. I know in your snare drum collection alone, you've got Black Beauties, you've got Bell Brass, Tamas. Um, what are some of the other unique drums that you have that these guys would love to probably hear something about? I am. Um, I, I have all the usual suspects is, is, is what you would say. But so, I don't know, some of the unique stuff. I have some, I have a couple of like cannabis drums, um, Cool. which one's like a solid aluminum is really cool. I know you like solid aluminum and I like solid aluminum Yeah, because you have your DMR six yep. and a half by 14 or six by 14. And I have my, my five by 14 Gretsch, which technically are this exactly the same shells, same, same yeah. thing, except the inches difference. Um, I have that. Um, but you know, I have, I have some of those cool old Zildjian Noble and Cooley drums. I have, um, uh, you know, the Zildjian metal drums and, uh, at both sizes I, those are really cool um i don't know about uh, I, it's weird is i have a i have a a, a a kent snare drum do you remember the kent drum company I remember like kent. I, Gretch, you know gretch used to make the kents they, that was i i did not see i did now wow see this means gretch was more for me more more in my bloodline yeah. than, but um yeah i have a a, a, a kent kit and uh, I can't wait to tell Nick that because we used the Kent Red Sparkle kit I have on in the Dark and Lonely Night video. So now oh. that there's a Gretsch tie to it, I can't wait to tell him that. That's cool. Yeah, he'll be stoked. Nick, I, I I don't know if they were like importing them for Gretsch, you know, but I've heard like Weckel had a Kent drum. That was the first time I ever heard of a Kent drum. All I had heard was there was Kent New York, and they were out of like Kent New York or something. The the drums that I have. They weren't yeah, the MI, they weren't the MIJ version. Yeah, the that's, the connection, that's the connection to Brooklyn. That's okay. in Brooklyn. So, you know, okay. that's the connection. So I, I heard about a couple guys have talked about Kent, you know, being I mean, maybe they're not made in Japan at all. Maybe they're made in upstate New York. They were just a lesser brand. They weren't the Gretsch Pro shells. I don't know what were the, what the shells are made of, even, you know. They're the, uh, what from what I know, they were a very thin one ply bent maple very thin though but not like anything like a craviato or 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 a slingerland radio king or or whatever but but um they're really cool and they sound great and I, I got this kit like on ebay from like arizona or something and i think it was about i don't know it wasn't a lot of money but it was a really great kit um anyways 
but uh blah 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 drums blah, 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 blah. so good with this mike um jeff holden said they were made in the america until the late 1960s so they were an american-made drum the kents that's pretty yes. interesting by right. the way for you that are, are writing in um somebody asked about any tips for musicians playing um when you have no other musicians to play with any tips drumless tracks is my tip for that that's what i do all day long and that's what that's what you guys watch on my youtube channel is me playing along with drumless tracks you can have a lot of fun with that but back to kent drums mike i don't want to cut you off sorry about that. oh no 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 let's go back to that for a minute i used to play the records and it's funny as i talked to somebody i hadn't talked to in a long time ago that when i was like 18 or 19 sort of playing to him he always said that i had really good time yeah, and at my time's hopefully way better than it was back then, but it was always playing to records. But what's funny, you said drumless tracks. That's cool. That's like new. We didn't have drumless tracks back then. Right. But a lot of times when you're recording for somebody, you actually have a either a completed piece of music with a click track and no drums, or you have um, a click track and scratch guitar, scratch vocals, and scratch, and you're sort of playing to that and the click anyway so that's essentially a drumless track but that's going to be the track for a record so that's a really great way to to uh to uh start your uh if you don't have anybody to play with um, yeah definitely you know the other thing is in today's and there's a difference in how we record today like you said a lot of times you're doing scratch guitars scratch if you're lucky a scratch bass probably don't get that but you get a click and you get to play a drum track and they're going to keep the drum track and then they're going to put everything else on top of you. So you got to right. play it perfectly in time, perfectly locked up, or the engineer is going to fix it on the grid when they're done. But the old days, when you play that old music, you're locking, they're all locking together in a room. That's a big difference. Yeah. And the drumless tracks from like the older songs, like the stuff, the music I play a lot of these days, I'm playing along to drumless tracks that I created through extract stems and then taking the drums out and locking in. And it's amazing when you remove the old drummer and you start locking into some of these bass players that you're playing with on some like the Steely Dan stuff or even some of the old 60s stuff. And it's very locked in and you just get kind of in that groove and you lock. It's like kind of like being in the room with them again and. And I get that's what I love doing with with the drumless tracks and the stuff I do on YouTube is I'm kind of locking in with the studio band. That's and cool. That is fun. That is a lot of fun for me. And I think that's what I enjoy the most about it. That's why I do so many darn covers is because I'm having so much fun with it. It's much better than playing over top of the drummer like I did for years playing the records. You know, I, sure. I learned all those Chicago records. And of course, Danny Seraphin's time was not as good as jeff Picaro's times so that's that's another story for another day right so. yeah it's funny you said that because i um i always throw the video uh the video camera the video camera on my phone i always video when i'm in rehearsal i try to put my phone next to the floor tom so i get a better blend of uh not the cymbals the crash sorry the hi-hats and the snare blowing out the thing but i was uh playing to something yesterday um and uh that that i that i had played on a recording just uh, uh not a recording a rehearsal because i was uh trying to figure out some parts and and um i in my head i heard different things because i wasn't playing i was hearing more so therefore the drum track i was playing to which was myself um wasn't lining up with all of the new parts that i was not, not a ton of new parts but it was driving but um, so it was, it was difficult to do, but it's, sometimes it's good to get away from yourself as well right. and, and listen and then try to play over it. Obviously we're two guys in a garage and I just threw my phone down to get a rough memory of the song. Uh, but now when we go in and record it, I have more ideas to play, but it was hard to play for me against myself because I changed kick drum pattern and I changed the stops or I heard the stops more, so I was accentuating them more. So it must have been hard back in the day for you, Earl, when you were playing to like Danny, uh, Danny Seraphane on those records where some of that shit was pretty busy too, right? Oh, yeah, very busy. And so maybe you maybe were playing a little straighter or maybe, maybe your busyness or accents were sort of there but not there to it because right. you were playing it as you play things the way you feel they should be played. Um, yeah. 
You know what I mean? So that's always hard. So when you can play with something without tracks and have a click, oh, that's the, sometimes I'd rather play with those kind of guys because sometimes these guys in the band are a pain in the ass. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. so anyway, so that's really cool. I, I should, uh, I should maybe, uh, get, go on YouTube and find some drumless tracks to play to, you well, know, with a click. I'll send you a few. So yeah. you're working on something you want, but that's one way. That's one way of getting some playing time in. You know, um, I find that YouTube and being able to record myself playing music is is helpful to me. I learn more from watching myself play. Believe it or not, yeah. I mean, you know, some of you, some of the guys out there that watch me, they get something out of me playing. But I think I get a lot out of me playing too. I say this a lot. So, right. But um, back to Mike Fasano for a second. You know, and that your drum room. So um, you got your Gretsch drums up. You got your Zildjian cymbals up. What's yes, the sir. Symbols of the day. Are you still playing the Armand hi hats, or did you move to something new? Back to the you KZ? know what? I w the KZs are right there. Okay. Thirteens. Um, I put a bunch of silly, silly splashes up. Silly right. splash. Oh, I I, I want to be like the kids today that are using the uh, the the stacks. Yeah. So I stack two splashes. It doesn't sound like the kids in the metal bands, but that thing. Um, I got my K. I always I was like a K, eighteen or nineteen crash. I have my K twenty two jazz ride, which is which is fun. Nice. Uh, a sweet a crash. Mark, that's kind of an interesting symbol. Yeah, there's a tape on the bottom. I hear. It wasn't I heard, heavy enough. Heard it. Uh, I got these little ten inch uh, special recording hats, which are fun over here. I've made another little stack over here. Um, I have this uh, tr custom trash um, uh, trash crash hybrid right. that I put some sizzles in it. Oh, that's that makes it a little bit even hipper, I think. Yeah, it's it's, it's pretty. And then I got for the sake of the coronavirus. I got on. that guy. Wow, how come I can't get the... Is that a 22 or is that a 20? It's a 20. I got a 22. I got a 20 also. Not two. I have a 20 also. Mine's really old, though. Mine's from like the 70s. So. Well, I don't know. I don't know. This logo is sort of not brand new, but it's not old either. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah. What era is that? Uh, That's probably 90s or... 2000s okay because they, they didn't really start putting logos on their their stuff till the 2000s everybody started putting logos on their stuff right i'll see some of my friends leaving claws are you leaving thanks for being on today just uh, dropping like flies yeah well, that's what happens you know you talk start talking wuhan start scaring yeah. people you know but um wuhan just came out with a new china symbol it's got like a, a bell on it i forget what they called it i was looking at them today they oh, i didn't don't know about it yeah, they're kind of like the Nova Chinas. The Ch the they look oh. a lot like the Peisty Nova Chinas because you know yeah. you got that funky handbell that you designed to kind of play. You know that's right. why it's got a grip on it. Yeah, Peisty copied their, their their bells off that Wuhan bell design a lot, but then they did the Nova China, which has a bell that you can play. I didn't think the Wuhan bell sounded really playable today. I watched somebody testing one, doing one, right, but. I thought it was interesting. It was kind of an inverted China for, for Wuhan to come up with something. They're calling it, um, they got a new name for the, the line too that they're calling it. I forget the name of it. So they're they're trying to like put another line of Wuhan's up that they can charge a little more money for, I think. Oh, cool. Be with dreams, I guess. You know, the whole dream thing. Yeah, I got to check that out. Yeah. Stuff like that's fun. Like accent symbols are fun. I always like to have at least one something that's not just a straight crash or a straight ride, you know, something yeah. with something. So anyway, I like China symbols, but that's just me. You know, I mean, yeah. today music doesn't really require China symbols. So, right. Yeah. yeah um, that's a, it's our era well, though, that we sort of came out with. Bed. It's 11 20. You need to go to bed. Claus. Good night. You know, right. he's from Sweden. So great. Some cool friends. But, um, this is this is interesting. We made this this kind of come together today, Mike. Very impromptu. Us hanging out, this, talking before, but yeah, you know, cool, very, very cool. Well, you should probably end this and then 
or let or I'll leave because I have a button that I can say leave and then you can stay on and then you can end your chat and and I think it gives you the option on Streamlab Yard to to um, upload it or if it doesn't upload it all I don't I think it gives you the option to upload it or not. Yeah, my key thing is to not do what I did to my Sunday. I was really ticked off. That's what got me on this thing today. Believe okay. It or not. Um. But this actually worked. It actually worked yeah. pretty well. That, and so. it would have, and you could have sent a bunch of more uh, invites out to people with the link, and then put in as many as they let you put in. You can keep them backstage. You can add people and have three people, and then you can have two people, then you have five people. It's it's just it's just the control center that you're seeing that I'm not seeing. It's pretty pretty easy. If if a if a dummy like me can do it, you you got this no problem. Well. I, I did figure it out, and thank you for helping me figure that out. That was cool. No problem. Cool. Um, we'll do another one, and we'll talk more about your drums and your collection. Yeah, yeah. This is just – I wouldn't even save this for the YouTube. I would just – Oh, this no. Was, we'll, we'll save but, it. We'll put right. it up there. Somebody will want to watch it later. So, okay. Thanks, man. All right. Good to see you, buddy. I'll talk to you later. Talk to you later. See you. Bye. Stay safe. Bye. Right, you too. Hi to Mrs. Hammer. I will. <laughs> see you. All right. Um, good night, Philip. Philip, for sticking in from Derbyshire, UK. Lori, hi, Lori, for being here. Thank you, all of you that uh, stuck it out with me on this live stream. Um, this was very impromptu. Thank you, CCM drummer Matthew. Thank you for being on. This was extremely impromptu. My plan is to actually announce it with a premiere kind of thing. So, when I do the official live Ask Girl Anything, it's probably going to be, I'm trying to say it's going to be Sunday morning. It might be Saturday morning. I haven't decided, but I will give you a day's notice, everybody. I will make the decision and we will do it. Hi, Eric. F, thanks for being on. Um, yo. Um, so that's that's the plan. I will go to a live format, but it'll be, I'm going to still do my other Ask Girl Anything. As a matter of fact, my other Ask Girl Anything will drop tomorrow morning. So I did a long show. I had a lot of questions, but I like this format for kind of getting questions and going with it for a little bit. Uh, Mike, I've talked about Mike many times on the show and he's a good friend and we talk often. And I think if I can do a little show prep, maybe I could have asked him some better questions, but he's got quite a collection of drums. So that and he's extremely knowledgeable. Don't let anybody tell you he's not knowledgeable. He is extremely, they'll let him tell you he's not knowledgeable. He is very knowledgeable about drums. So any other questions, guys? Thank you for the good show comments. Uh, Lori said, I only just spotted it on my phone live. Ask girl anything's weekends fine for me. Well, we're planning on, that's what we're going to plan on trying this weekend, at least for a little while, see how it works. All right, everybody. Well, thank you all. I'm going to go make dinner. It is dinner time in South Florida. So thank you all for being on. I appreciate it. See you, family. Bye.